Welcome back to the analysis seminar. Our speaker today is Martí Prats from Universitat de Barcelona. And his title today is the two-phase problem for harmonic measure in VMO via jump formulas for the risk transform. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, first of all, let me say that this is, uh, as I explained, is a joint work that I did with uh, Xavier Dolsa uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, okay, it was a good pleasure to learn about uh, harmonic measure with him by doing this paper. <laughs> so, so I will try to explain as well as I can our results. Although my memory from this period of non-sleeping <laughs> because of my baby, it's probably uh, interfering in the conference today. So I will try to do it as well as I can. So let me start by making some small, some short introduction. Uh, first, uh, about harmonic measure. Let's recall what is the Dirichlet problem. We have a bounded domain here, uh, omega, and uh, we, we, we assume it to be in Rn plus one with n greater or equal than two. So um, we will skip the complex plane somehow in our results, okay? Just because it's a bit different, uh, the behavior. Now, we consider the direct problem that is uh, finding a function that, has, uh, that is harmonic in the domain and coincides with, with our function in the boundary. Now, if the, if the boundary is good enough, uh, given a point inside the domain, uh, we have a unique continuous assignation from the continuous functions f in here to uh, u of z, okay? Now, uh, the, this implies that there is a unique Borel probability measure uh, on the, which is called a harmonic measure uh, on the boundary, so that uh, u of z is uh, this assignation, okay? It's just a, this representation theory. And we call this, this measure, uh, the harmonic measure with Paul Z. Okay. Uh, let me say that different poles give rise to mutually absolutely continuous measures. So they may be different, but they have the kind of the same properties. So we, we will omit often, uh, if maybe, maybe even always, uh, who is the pole, because it's not really important for us. So, uh, what, is, uh, what are the questions about harmonic measure that we are talking about? First, what is the dimension of the support of the measure, for instance? And more than the support, let's say, uh, of a set that concentrates the whole measure, because sometimes the support is the whole boundary, but the support, the, the, the measure can be concentrated in a subset of the boundary, uh, such that it has a lower dimension. Somehow. Okay. And then when, when is uh, the surface measure mutually absolutely continuous with respect to the harmonic measure? And what is the connection to rectifiability? Okay. These are the questions that are more or less related to our work. Now, some answers in the plane. Uh, if omega is simply connected and has finite uh, length, then uh, automatically there is a mutual absolute continuity between both. Okay. Then uh, there are other results in the complex plane using complex analysis, like Arleson, Makarov, Jones, Bishop, Wolf, Garnett. Very interesting works, but uh, this, this, need, this use uh, powerful tools from complex uh, analysis. And uh, when you go to RN, you need to use real analysis techniques to, to substitute this. Okay. Okay. So let's get on. So first, what is an NTA domain? Let's say first, what is a Harnack condition? The Harnack condition, so we say that a domain satisfies the Harnack condition if every X and Y uh, in the domain that are closed enough in a certain radius that is given, this is part of the information of being NTA is putting radius. So this radius, as long as you work in a certain radius, you should be able to, per to perform this kind of construction, okay? Here, maybe it's possible, maybe here it is not. Um, now, what, what is this condition? Is that you have a series of balls that are, uh, are, are, that are neighboring uh, and such that the number of balls is bounded by a constant that depends only on this factor. So, so the, the ratio between the distance of the two points and the minimal distance to the bound. Okay? So this domain doesn't satisfy this condition because you can get closer and closer and closer to the to the to the boundary and still you have a very like um, long path around uh, 
okay, even if you are just new, but here you still have a very fast path around, so on. Uh, okay, and uh, this this balls need to be winnable, so the the distance to the boundary need to be comparable to the to the size of the ball. Okay. Now this is not, of course, a, a, a this doesn't satisfy hard chain condition. Now, first group condition uh, is just that for every ball in the boundary of radius smaller than R, then you can make an exterior and an interior ball. But this doesn't happen if you have a cusp. So this is not, uh, this is not a, a coarse group domain. Of course, the balls need to have a radius comparable to the big, the big radius, and this is getting smaller and smaller. Okay, so this is not. And what is what is then an entity domain? Well, one example is the uh, von Koch snowflake. Here you, you can you can find these these paths, and you can find both interior and exterior for screw balls. Okay, for everyone that you, that you take. Uh, okay, so let's move on. These are entity domains, and harmonic measure is very good in entity domains because its support first coincides with the whole boundary, and the measure is doubling. Okay. Measure the harmonic measure is doubling in entity domains. So we have a very powerful analysis tools for, for, for this case. All our talk is inside this, uh, this family of domains, NTA domains. Now let's let's talk about first one-sided results. Uh, one phase free boundary problem for harmonic measure would be to characterize geometrically the absolute continuity of uh, omega and sigma. Omega is the harmonic measure, sigma is the, the surface measure uh, of the of the domain. Okay. Now, first, the first result in this in this uh, line would be this Dahlberg result from from seventy seven. It says, for instance, that if omega, omega is Lipschitz domain, then uh, the density is satisfies a reverse Heller condition of exponent two, and this implies, in particular, that omega is an A infinity weight with respect to sigma. Okay. Uh, uh, let's recall that A infinity is like uh, the union for P of AP that can be characterized. Let's see, I have it here somewhere. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, one way to put it is that if sigma of F is more equal than sigma uh, epsilon times sigma of a ball with F included in the ball, then uh, omega of F like more equal than epsilon power delta uh, omega of the ball or something like this. Okay, it's kind of dominant. So this is like a, a um, quantitative way to, to measure absolute continuity. Okay, now uh, what is reverse Heller? So reverse Heller is uh, the reverse inequality of Heller. Of, of course, everybody knows that the integral of a function, let's put this function, this is not an innocent. Uh, this function is more equal than this thing here. Okay, this is Helder's inequality. Now the reverse Helder inequality is, is just changing the order, but then you have to pay the price of a constant. Okay, this uh, if, if a measure satisfies this, it says that it satisfies the reverse Helder condition in this case of exponent two. Okay, and note that this is the same as this. Let's move on. Now, David and Jerison in the 90s showed that uh, if omega is a Kordak domain, that is that it's NTA domain and it's uh, alpha stability regular. This means that uh, the growth, the growth of a ball centered in the boundary is essentially the radius of the ball power n. Okay, this is an NA regular. Uh, okay, a domain that is a core dark, then uh, satisfies that. Uh, the harmonic measure is uh, is an infinity weight. Okay. This, there is a recent big big through that is a geometric characterization of weak A infinity, uh, and it is rel related to the solvability in LP of the Dirichlet problem. Okay, and this is uh, this couple of papers. Okay, now the, this is not exactly true because I think these two papers are now just one paper together, and it's uh, I think it's already published. I should change this reference, but. Of course, if you look for the five authors together, I think there is only one paper by all of them, so you can you can find it. Okay. 
Now, uh, let's talk about uh, two-sided results uh, of the uh, two-phase uh, free boundary problem that would be characterized geometrically the omega plus and omega minus. And what is what 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 does this mean? This is the harmonic measure of a domain. So if this is omega, then you take omega minus as the complement, and let's call this omega plus, for instance, and then harmonic measure from inside. So the harmonic measure from the pole inside, this would be uh, this omega plus, and then if you come from outside, you would have omega minus. Okay, uh, this would be the harmonic measure. Uh, and now we want to characterize when this is mutually absolutely continuous for the joint domain. So, okay. Now there is a theorem by uh, Azam Mogoglu and Tolsa that is very recent that uh, says that if omega plus linear n plus one is an NTA domain and the complement, so the interior of the complement is also an NTA domain, then the following is our equivalent. Uh, uh, you have this A infinity condition of one respect to the other is equivalent to both of, uh, of the measures have very big pieces of uniformly and rectifiable measures. Okay, what does this mean? This means that uh, pieces of uniformly rectifiable measures, then this says that for every epsilon and for every ball, you can find a set F, a set of the ball, such that the measure of the set is essentially all of the ball, okay? And satisfying that F is uniformly rectifiable with constants depending on epsilon. And, uh, and yes, and coming on respect to F is uh, absolutely continuous with respect to surface measure, something like this. Okay, this is having very big pieces. And uh, having, and very big pieces means that you can make epsilon as small as you want. So it's essentially you can cover everything, paying the price that worsening the constants here. And now uh, having the, having joint big pieces of cortex subdomains would be uh, maybe I should erase all this stuff just to make some some room. Maybe just erase everything. Mm. Okay. Uh, have joint big pieces of products of domains would be that you have a domain in omega, you take a ball, and inside this ball, this may be very bad in another region, very good in another region, but you can always find a subset in one side and in the other, a subdomain, okay, that is core dark and that have uh, the, the piece of the intersection, so this common region of. Um, this common region of the boundary uh, has a big part of both harmonic measures okay. in the ball. Now, let's, let's talk about other non-quantitative results. That means, for instance, uh, uh, say that what does imply that these measures are just mutually absolutely continuous instead of infinity. So here is infinity is a quantitative version and uh, of, of this of absolute continuity. Now, what does this imply? That uh, both uh, harmonic measures are mutually absolutely continuous. Then uh, we look when we look for when this implies that there exists a set such the harmonic measure, uh, both, both, both uh, harmonic measures are mutually absolutely continuous with respect to the surface measure. And such that this set is essentially everything in terms of harmonic measure, okay? Now, this, this, is, this implication is shown for Jordan arcs in the plane by Bishop, Carles, Carlson, Garnett, and Jones. Then for general domains in the plane by Bishop, for NTA domains by Kenneth Press, Kenneth Price, and Toro, and for CDC domains by Azar Mogogogogogogos. And finally, the more general version existing is for general domains for every domain in the world by uh, Jonathan Sam, Mihailis, uh, Xavier, and, and Sasha Bogog in 2019. So these are uh, non quantitative versions of this. So both one-sided and two-sided problems are more, more or less well understood. Let's talk about what is what happens in recurrent flat domains and, and with uh, this vanishing uh, oscillation. Let's say, let's let's see. Uh, so what is Reichenberg flatness? We say that a set, general set, is Reichenberg flat. Uh, a set E is Reichenberg flat if for every 
this is e. We have uh, x. Maybe I should say that x is in e. I think. Well, let's let's put it here and take a ball. And the idea is you can find you can find the plane or a hyperplane that approximates in both directions. So um, let's let me just draw a worst case and take uh, this ball and approximate with the plane. Then here, uh, maybe the distance would be small, but uh, still there are like big, uh, big gaps. No? There are big gaps here. So, so these points are very close, but but the reverse, in the in the reverse uh, direction, this point here is very far from 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 this point here. Okay, or this point here. So this is far. This is here. The delta would be like this. No, the, this, this, this coefficient would be very big. Instead, here, what we are asking is that it's a kind of bilateral beta. So in both directions, the distance from red to blue and the distance from blue to red are both small. This is what we are saying here. Okay? And we always take a scaling variant version. So this is like Peter Jones betas or this kind of stuff, but somehow bilateral. Now let's move on. This, this would We say that a set is regular flat if it satisfies this condition. And uh, that this is uh, like small, no, like small lambda and delta. And in general, for domains, we say that the domain is delta r right number flat if the following happens. So for every point in the boundary, we have that uh, this this thing here is smaller than delta. No? This is what we have here. So at this every point in the boundary, you can you can just and and for every radius, you have like this the, the ratio between this and the radius of the ball. Is smaller than delta. Okay, this is what says here. And moreover, we, what we ask is also that that uh, uh, this delta strip that covers the, the the boundary of the domain separates the interior and the, exter the exterior of the domain. Okay, so note that here this is interior and this is exterior. Well, this is not true because here we have a piece that is uh, just giving uh, problems for us. Okay, so. Uh, is in, at this scale, we should take perhaps this. Okay. Okay, but note that this this is like this seems like very smooth smooth thing. This this seems like Lipschitz somehow, but this is this can be worse somehow than Lipschitz because you can allow spiraling. So spiraling may happen in uh, delta R Reichenberg flat domains. Okay, and not in one point, but almost everywhere. Or well, or let's say in a dense set uh, of the of the boundary, you you may find spirals. So because you know how to how to make that. Okay. So they, they may be quite quite complicated. So uh, a small small delta uh, implies that that the domain is in particular NTA. Okay. So talking about uh, NTA domains in the setting of Reichenberg flat sets is essentially saying nothing if we need small constants. And this is the case. So it's quite, quite natural setting. Now, if omega is vanishing, we say that omega is vanishing Reichenberg flat. If it is delta R Reichenberg flat for every delta, so we can always find a small scale where uh, the delta is small enough. Okay, in a uniform way. Is it clear? You can interrupt whenever you want. So, uh, of course, you know that. Uh, this is a Reichenberg flatness. Let's say what is VMO. We say that a measure or a measure mu and a function that is integrable with respect to the measure, at least locally. And uh, let's take a set E, which should be measurable, I guess. Then we write uh, the the mean of the of the function f with respect to this measure in this set. Uh, we can write this, and it's exactly the, what, what you expect the mean. Now we assume mu to the doubling. Then we say that the function f is in VMO of the of this measure. If this the function minus its mean in the ball, okay, uh, maybe this is uh, this should not be here. Yes, exactly. Uh, the function min minus the mean uh, in the ball of f uh, is uh, is uh, somehow in L two with respect. So the so the mean of the oscillation, this is this the oscillation is is just uh, controlled. This would be BMO, but we also ask that this goes to zero as the radius goes to zero. 
So, so the BMO norm, the BMO norm vanishes, vanishes when the radius goes to zero. Okay, this is what we are saying here. So this is why, why it is called vanishing mean oscillation. Okay, let's move on. Now it is well known that VMO coincides with the closure closure of the set of bounded bounded uniformly continuous functions as subpart of mu in the VMO norm. This is not important for us because we are not uh, using it at all. So let's just keep this idea. But just for, for the record. Um, no, but it's asymptotic, asymptotic absolute continuity. This is another interesting uh, idea that appears in the in the work. Even even await uh, W. Uh, in the doubling measure space, uh, Corey shows that the following asymptotic with, with conditions are equivalent for every p with the time zero. Okay, it is the same that this limit goes to zero. Okay, so that this is this uh, here. We, what we are saying this is the BMO norm. Okay, this is star stands for the BMO norm. This is this uh, what would be log of W minus the mean. U of log W, the mu, take square, the mu, this is the BMO norm, it is a star, and uh, with respect to Q, no? And well, we we would say, uh, maybe we should, we should say here R, instead of Q, we write R, and for every R, including Q, okay? this would be this, this norm, okay? And when, when, when the length of Q goes to zero, this, this norm would, would go to zero, this is, Kind of uh, logarithm of omega. This is like logarithm of omega uh, of W. Sorry, is VMO. No? VMO. This is what we are saying. And the other one, note, note what what is what is written here. This is the limb soup again when the length goes to zero. The same. And here is this division. Note, note that this is the reverse Kelder inequality. Okay. What we are saying is the limb soup. What we are saying is that integral of Q omega t d mu one over t. Is more equal than a constant times the integral. This is reverse Helder, I told you before, but the constant goes to one. Okay, of course, the reverse inequality is always true with constant with constant equal one. So we are kind of uh, putting both things together in the limit. Okay. Fine. So the first condition is, uh, as I said, logarithm is in VMO, and the second condition is a vanishing, kind of vanishing reverse Helder condition of exponent p. So vanishing for this reason, because the constant goes to one. So you can say that the constant is one plus epsilon, and epsilon goes to zero. No? This would be the reverse Helder constant. Okay, so, so both conditions are equivalent. And also vanishing, uh, there is a vanishing AQ condition and a vanishing A infinity condition, and all of these conditions are equivalent. This is a very nice work by, by Cori that uh, you can find uh, easily. I can get you the reference maybe if you, if you need. So the, the weight W is called asymptotically absolute continuous by Cori, uh, and they, he writes it in this, in this, this way. Okay? So it's an infinity, but asymptotically, it's kind of vanishing or. Now, one side of the problem for VMO. Uh, Kenny Cantoro showed in a series of three papers the following result. So let omega be a bounded Kordak domain. So remember that this is NTA and uh, a course that is regular, okay, Kordak domain, and which is delta, delta red number flat with delta small enough. Then uh, we take the harmonic measure, V omega, we call P, whatever and write uh, the surface measure. Then, what do we have? L the logarithm of the density is in VMO of sigma. That means, as in the notation of Cori, it means that omega is asymptotically a infinity, okay? okay. Now, the inner normal N exists sigma almost everywhere, and it belongs to the vanishing uh, mean oscillation of sigma. So, and also it's equivalent to the same, the same, the same, the same, and that omega is vanishing red number flat. So omega is vanishing red number flat is a consequence of both of, of both A or B. Okay, so the three three elements are, are equivalent. Mm -hmm. 
Now, what is our result in in, in the problem? For, is what we we uh, worked about uh, two years ago, and it's now published online. I think not yet in a, in a journal with a number. Uh, it's uh, for the calculus of variation from PPE. It's the following: uh, let omega plus be a domain, and uh, assuming assume that omega minus is also NTA, both are NTA. Uh, assume that uh, now following our equivalent, first two ideas. The logarithm of the density is in VMO. Okay, this is the same as saying that omega minus is asymptotically in, in a infinity of omega plus. Okay, that's what in the in the equation. Okay, and this is following three conditions. First class is vanishing by Fembert flat, which is similar to the previous slide. The normal vector is in VMO of, with respect to omega plus, not this omega plus. And now I'm reading it. <laughs> so, okay, this is important. Okay. This, this, uh, of course, the difference between the, between the previous theorem is what we put inside here. No? And then uh, we need an extra condition here that is the following. This is that Omega plus, plus minus is in the reverse Helder class of exponent three halves of omega minus plus, whatever. You can you can ask one of the conditions, so you can ask omega plus with respect to omega minus, you can ask omega minus with respect to omega plus, or you can ask both. All of them are equivalent as long as you have all the, all the stuff here. Okay, so uh, let's make a couple of remarks about this first result. Uh, A implies B. Uh, was already shown the the vanishing Reffenberg flat condition was already shown by by Kenny and Toro. Okay. Then uh, by Cori also this condition is immediate from this. Okay. So our only contribution contribution here, our humble contribution here is this one. We have to prove this. Okay. My uh, I now I need to connect my uh, laptop because it's about to to die. And so, okay, yes, sorry for that. I forgot to connect to the net. So, he's alive again. Let's continue. So, uh, yeah, I, I was saying that our main contribution is that the normal vector be belongs to the GMO in this implication. Now there is a the converse complication is more involved, and there is another equivalent idea that is also omega plus is vanishing Reffenberg flat. And here, instead of asking uh, this thing that uh, you may think that it's not geometrical enough, you can say that you have this oscillation in this sense, uh, this vanishing oscillation in a different sense. Here, instead of putting the mean. What we put here is a fixed vector, and this this n b is just uh, you take uh, delta Reffenberg flatness, mm -hmm. so and uh, you have a, nor, uh, a natural candidate as a normal vector in this ball that is the orthogonal to the to the minimizing plane. Okay, this is n b. This is this normal vector here. So this is not computed using uh, means with respect to harmonic measure, but it's just uh, a geometric. Uh, geometric element. Okay. Now, if this this oscillation is uh, vanishing, and we need to ask the infinity condition in this case, then uh, also this condition is equivalent to the, to, the other, to the other conditions. And if still you think that this is not geometric enough, recall the previous previous result by uh, Asamur Goblin and also that characterized this a infinite condition as Omega plus minus having joined big pieces of cordial subdomains, which maybe is uh, has a more geometric flavor for you. Okay. Okay. So let's move on. Uh, note that it's important to 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 mention that we don't assume that the boundary is locally finite in in the in the half surface measure, the surface measure. Okay. So let's let discuss a bit about this right angle flatness. Why is it necessary? Uh, take take the following cone in R in R two. 
this and this is not the same domain, so avoid R2, let's go to R4. In R4, if we take this cone, this relation, we have here something that is connected, and here something that is connected, okay, to the, the, for, for dimensions. And uh, so we have two domains here, omega plus and omega minus. And, and if you put the pole at infinity, uh, then both uh, measures are like exactly the same. Okay, they coincide. So, so this is immediate. This condition is immediate. But this is not true because, because there is here, uh, there is here a ball that doesn't satisfy that when you get smaller and smaller, the oscillation uh, goes to zero. Okay. So, uh, I think that planet's condition is necessary for us. Okay. You may ask if vanishing Reichenberg planet's condition can be avoided. I don't know. Uh, in, the, in the assumptions. Okay. We, we haven't been able to remove that. Okay, so let's let's go for some proof. Let's see. Uh, I was very ambitious to put all the proofs, all the main proofs. This one and this one. We will want to do everything, I tell you, because maybe it's uh, too technical. But uh, I will try to sketch at least the first proof and, and see where can we arrive. Um, okay, I will improvise a bit. Sorry for that. Um, okay, let's let's uh, give some preliminaries. First, define uh, omega or omega plus. Sometimes we will write like this or like this as a harmonic measure with pole uh, uh, with a certain pole inside the domain, and omega minus uh, for the harmonic measure of the complement with uh, another pole. Then theta theta will be the density of the ball. Then if we put if we put a ball inside theta, this is the density the kind of density of the ball that is the the harmonic measure of the ball divided by the radius. And if we put a point inside theta, then we are talking about, about really the density. So the limit of the of the densities of the balls somehow when uh, when we go to the radius goes to zero. Yeah. Okay. Now maximum hardy little root operator would be this. Uh, you know, I guess everyone knows it here. It's a premium of, of the mean of the absolute value of the function with respect to the measure. Now, maximal operator of measures, uh, we will do this maximal operator uh, related here. This is like related to this kind of thing here. It is it's this supremum, okay? So for a point, you have the density, which is one thing, and the maximal, which is another thing, okay? It's the supremum. One is the limit, the other is the supremum. Okay, let's move on. Uh, there are analogous uh, definitions if you put a minus. Everywhere, I guess you have enough imagination to you know how to do it. Uh, and that, now let's say that given a synced, uh, synced random measure nu, nu, uh, then we consider the dimensional resonance uh, for defined as follows. It should be the integral of the kernel, the kernel is this vector, vector value of kernel uh, against the, the measure, whenever this integral make, makes sense. Note that uh, in general, this, this kernel will not be integrable. Maybe you need uh, principal values. Maybe the principal value doesn't even exist. Uh, so just whenever it makes sense, let's say. Now, for epsilon greater than zero, what we define and should uh, have always sense uh, is the following, as long as uh, the measure is uh, locally finite or, or have a nice growth at infinity, you should be able to define this, uh, the, the truncated at least transform. So you just ask, you just uh, avoid the singularity of the kernel, the singularity at the origin, uh, you avoid it, and you just write it like that. And then R star will be the supremum of all these, of all these uh, truncated versions. And it's always well defined. It can be infinite, infinite, but uh, it's always well defined. And we also write uh, this uh, risk transform with respect to mu as an operator, by just uh, applying uh, risk transform to f times me. Okay. Let's move on. Okay. Uh, capacity density condition and tangent points. Okay. I won't tell you what is a capacity density condition, but it is a consequence of being NPA between other things. So every NPA domain satisfies this. Uh, so uh, there, there is a work by, by Asam Rolando Tolsa. That, that show that CDC domains, in particular NPA domains, 
with common boundary and such that mutual uh, the harmonic measures exterior and interior are mutually absolutely continuous, then the boundary of the domain has an irreducible, uh, an irreducible subset F with full harmonic measure, such that the following happens. First, both harmonic measures are mutually absolutely continuous with respect to house measure as well. On F. All points on F are tangent points. That means that you have uh, that you have a tangent line in this in this uh, in this point, a real tangent, not approximate, a real tangent there. Okay. Uh, now F is tense in the in the boundary of omega. Okay. This is an easy consequence of of the fact that the harmonic measure is uh, support everywhere in the domain. Okay, and uh, the normal vector is interior unit normal, defined omega almost everywhere. Is defined omega almost everywhere, sorry. Now, uh, being unrectifiable means that uh, almost everywhere with respect to the surface measure, uh, the set is contained in a control union of C1 and dimensional manifold, I guess. So, I'm going to this. And, okay. Uh, let's talk about jump formulas for the risk transform, which is another key tool that we use. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm putting a lot of ingredients in the in, <laughs> in the balance, but into into like into play. But I, I, I guess it's maybe even more interesting knowing the the ideas that we use that the the, the proof itself. So what what we use from here uh, this jump formula. So since we don't have a locally finite Hausdorff measure, uh, traditional jump formulas may fail. Okay, so there is a recent work by, 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 by Tosa uh, that shows the following. These are these jump formulas. We have these jump formulas for the risk transform. This is much more general, but in our setting, our formulas are the following. Uh, the R plus, so the risk transform, when you approach the boundary from uh, uh, the exterior, so you have here omega plus, omega minus, we have a point X and the limit, the non tangential limit approaching from the inside of the risk transform, this is this thing here. This R plus means the non tangential limit. This is the non tangential limit from the outside. Okay. Now, the difference between the risk transform when you approach from outside and inside uh, is exactly the density times the normal vector. And the dimensional constant that we don't care about. Okay, and also uh, the, this is the difference. And what about the sum? Then the sum is the principal value of the risk transform that we, we, we write this. When we write this, we, we refer in the in, in the case of x belonging to the boundary, we refer to the principal value. Okay, so quite similar to the usual uh, jump formulas, but this 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 uh, idea here that is quite. So what is the main argument? I will sketch the main argument and maybe I give you some hints about the proof. If we have time enough and I don't know if we will. So let's, let's at least sketch the, the, the big idea of the, of, the, of the proof. So first, omega is, the, is doubling. So we can define a dyadic structure. Okay, so this means that we, we have the, in the whole boundary, we can define cubes of different generations, which are not cubes, but just sets, but we call them cubes for, for just for our uh, poor minds to, to be able to recall everything. So they have the same kind of behavior uh, that they have like an inner uh, ball inside the cube and a bigger ball that contains the cube such that their radius is comparable to our two, something like this, uh, that, that increases with the generation. Okay, whatever, dynamic structure. Now we define a, a good set uh, and a low density set. Okay, we will define that. I won't tell you what is now, but just take into account that the good set is good and the low density has low density. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's move on. So what we want to see is that the following, our, our for, for, for A implies B, recall that we are assuming that the logarithm of the density is in VMO. We want to show that the normal vector is in VMO. Now, this means that we want to show that this oscillation of the normal vector is vanishes with asymptotically. Now, let's try to do that. Uh, and let's do the following separation. First, in the QQ, we consider the back set, so the 
you cumin use the good set you can pull it back if you want and uh, you also put here the low density part okay and in the other in the other in the good part you put the good set minus the low density so here everybody has high density now we choose a constant the, the following constant and we use this uh, identity uh, just take it for granted it's easy to prove this is an exercise for everybody uh, you can show this uh, uh, inequality and now let's let's do that in uh, here okay we will do that in here note that if uh, here uh, you have n uh, this is uh, you can understand n as theta n divided by theta and the constant q is somebody divided by its modulus so you are in this you are in this setting and now what you have in the other side twice the, the modulus of these things so twice theta because the normal vector has modulus one and on the other side you have this mean okay now once we have this we are very happy because this thing here and this is the this is the main reason this thing, this thing here is uh, what appears in the in the jump formulas okay so our, our, our interest in plugging in the density is that the density appears in the jump formulas. So we will have all the tools, all the machinery of Calderon Zygmunt operators that will come handy because we can substitute this by the risk transform. Now, away from the density, what do we have? We have that theta is greater than, 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 than tau times the, the, the density of the cube. This, this will be just the, kind of the definition of the density set so that the, in the complement. This happens. Okay. So this means that here theta can be replaced uh, by this thing. So all in all, what do we have here? This is modulus two at most. So this is modulus at squared. This is modulus four at most. So you put a constant outside, and you can just put the measure of this. And this is this means this is bounded by the measure of this plus the measure of this. So this comes here, and from here we come here just using this. Input. Okay, it's easy. And now what we like to show is that this thing is small. That means that the good part takes everything at the end asymptotically, okay? The other thing, the low density is very small. Okay, the low density set is very small. And finally, here there is a balance. We would like to see that this thing is controlled by this. This tau squared is this tau squared. This tau will depend on epsilon two. So, in order to make this epsilon two uh, small, we will need to take tau very small. So, this is this is bad for our interest. But then we can find epsilon three that does not depend on this tau and epsilon two, a new epsilon three. We, we will make it very small, and and therefore we will we will control this by this. Okay. So this is the game. This is the game. Now, what have we used? Let's recall the ideas. OK, uh, just, just say that if epsilon goes to 0 uniformly on the length, then the normal vector is in PMR. OK, so this is the game. And let's see what, what have we used. First, the low density set contains all low density points. So outside of the, of the, of the low density, this happens. Second, the low density set is very small. Third, uh, the good set is very big. And fourth, the oscillation is bounded by, by, by this thing. Okay, this is what we have used in the last step. And this is what we will need to prove. Okay, well, we have to prove these four ideas. This, we, we need to prove these four ideas. Let's see how. Let's give a hint about how this is true. We won't, we won't see the whole proof, I tell you. Um, okay, how to see this proof? Let's see first what, what is the low density set. So take, take a, this dyadic family okay, uh, of, of cubes and take the maximal cubes P such the density is a small, is very small with respect to the density of the initial cube. So you start in a cube Q and you, you stop at P if the density of P is too small with respect to the density of Q. Okay, so we, we have lost a lot. Okay. And now low density is the union of all these cubes. Okay. You take all these maximal cubes that are disjoint, of course, they are maximal. At least the interiors are disjoint. And then this is the family of 
this is our density set. What happens in the complement? In the complement of the set, of course, the density is B. Okay, this is in email. Now, otherwise we would have stopped. Uh, the second lemma, uh, the second, the second identity, the second identity is this lemma. Okay, we need to see that the measure of the of the low density set is very small, and this is done like scale by scale. We we make an induction. We think we 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 perform an induction argument here. So uh, you take tau to be like epsilon uh, lambda power m, where lambda is a just fixed value, whatever, and uh, and assume that uh, well m of tau is like very big. I don't know what is m now. Maybe here. I am colliding. Okay, well, whatever. Tau is very small. Um, then writing uh, the low density power k as the low density of lambda power k. So we like performing an exponential uh, division with exponential steps. Huh? So at each step, we multiply by lambda. And we, we prove the following so that for from one scale to the following scale, we lose. Uh, some part of the measure. This eta is between 0 and 1. It can be very close to 1. It will probably be very close to 1, but um, it's strictly smaller than 1. So at every scale, we lose something. So now by induction, we this is pro proven uh, automatically. So this is what we need to show. And this will be shown as a consequence of a nice result that it's worth to mention. This is a result by um, okay, let's see from history. Uh, Nazarov, Tolson, and Wolberg showed that the Wittgenstein's conjecture that tells us that, uh, say that uh, the, the boundaries of the risk transform uh, implies the rectifiability somehow. Now, there, there is uh, this version of Hidra, Sarion, and Tolsa that is a local version of this of this theorem, so it's finer than, than, than the Wittgenstein's conjecture. And it says the following let's see, for every constant, C of zero and C one, there exists parameters such that for every ball satisfying the following five things. First, the infimum of the of this mean, the integral. This is like uh, integral version of this is a, like a, a Peter, you know, a Jones beta, no, no, uh, that it seems beta, no. This this is like a, we are asking that uh, the set is contained in a, in a strip, not completely, but at least in average, in L1 average. Okay, it's contained in a strip. That's the idea. The, the, the no, yes, the tail is uh, somehow controlled by the, by the density of the, of the ball itself. So if you take the balls bigger than, than B uh, and use some in scales in this way, then this is controlled by the density of the ball itself. So this is controlling from the ball to outside. Note that this, this is not for every ball, it's just for our ball. Okay, so this is not asking much. Now, then we also ask that there exists a good set such that uh, it takes a big part of the measure. And first, the maximum uh, operator of the measure plus the maximal risk transform of the and always restricting to the ball, it's a local version, is controlled by the density in for points in the good part, only in the good part. And also we ask that we have this BMO kind of control, okay, so the risk transform in the good set, in the good set, the oscillation of the risk transform is controlled by the theta by theta squared. So all these things we assume that are happening. If all these things happen, we have a consequence. And this consequence is that gamma, uh, that there exists a uniform and rectifiable set gamma, such that it takes a big part, at least some, some part of the of the ball. Okay. Is the consequence. What does it mean that uh, gamma is uniform and rectifiable set? What we are saying is that there exists a constant n and theta, such that for every x in E and radius between zero and the diameter. There exists a function, uh, which is Lipschitz, and such that uh, the measure of gamma in the section, the image of the ball in the section of our ball is greater or equal than a certain part. Okay, this is, you, can, you can show that this implies rectifiability. 
or so. Condition A, let's let's talk about these conditions. Condition A is immediate for, from breaking the flatness for us. And condition B can be shown using Rechenberg flatness again. Uh, and this is a consequence of some results by, by Kenny Cantoro. So our really real real uh, challenge is to show C, D, and E, okay? So first, we have to define a good set that is small, uh, that is big, and we have to check that in this good set, this is satisfied and this is satisfied, okay? And note that this is quite similar to the other remaining step that we need to show in the main proof, okay? But there, instead of having the, the, the principal value of this transform, what we have is theta times n, but this is also related to the risk transforms through the jump formulas. So essentially, this is like the very important idea. Okay, let's do it. Our assumption, ah, yes, of course, once, once you have uh, this condition, from this condition, you can show uh, uh, the lemma, the claim that we wanted to show using standard arguments that I will not uh, repeat here. Okay, I think we are just uh, reaching the end of the talk. Maybe, maybe I can try to rush through the last four slides. Maybe I can give you just these. Maybe let me rush a bit. I am a bit mischievous. Um, okay, so this is our assumption that the oscillation goes to zero. Okay, and what does this say? If the logarithm of h minus the mean of the logarithm uh, goes somehow to zero, we, we can grant that essentially in small enough balls, this factor, which is essentially like uh, if you take logarithms, is the, then you, you find the, the mean oscillation uh, is small. No? This will be small in a big part. No? So the good set will be somehow big, big. But this is not our good set. We will make some modifications. And with these modifications, we will grant that this happens, which is condition C. So now we only uh, need to show D and E. And then uh, our conditions always also imply that uh, the density between the exterior and interior harmonic measures are comparable to the, to the density of, of, of all the balls inside, smaller balls, and also that the, the, the density is kind of decreasing for balls, okay? So in particular, the maximum operator is bounded, okay, inside the good region, this for the good region. So now then by the definition of harmonic measure, we have to continue, the kernel is continuous, then you can see easily that the resistance form of, of, the, of the harmonic measure is exactly the kernel evaluated. No? Uh, just when you evaluate outside. So here the harmonic measure is inside. Okay, so we avoid the, the poles. No? And now using these ideas, uh, using Calderon's uh, immune estimates and so on, uh, one can show uh, this. This we have already shown in the previous slide, and this uh, can be shown using. Uh, this Calderon uh, estimates and so on. Okay, and once you have this, uh, there is a, a theorem by Nazar uh, Freyl and Bolberg that this implies that the risk transform is bounded in L two for this uh, in this good set. Okay. Now, on the other hand, recall this is a, these are the the jump formulas. Okay, and what we have seen from here. Okay, that the risk transform. From interior to exterior can be can be approximated if you take limits from the tangential limits here you find these two formulas okay now with all these in hand you find that here uh, here you have the kernel and here you have the kernel okay so uh, what you have in here is just the risk transform positive and here you have the risk transform positive so at the end of the day to control the oscillation of these two guys, that remember is the only thing that are, is missing, you just need to control the oscillation of this guy here and this guy here. And this is what, this is what we have to do. And this is the main, the, main, the main step of our proof, okay? So, uh, okay, what we will do is define a good set for lambda big enough. So this is uh, for a certain rescaling of, of Q. And uh, what we will have to show is this lemma. This is exactly what we want. This lemma will complete the proof. And this is what is difficult to do. And it's done by combining jump formulas with boundedness of the risk transform. We have already mentioned before. 
the point wise control of the maximum operators, estimates of the good set introduced before, all this stuff is used. And this lambda parameter that may seem mysterious here is used kind of to separate the local part from the non-local part. And then you, you can use this to plug in Adam Zygmunt uh, of diagonal estimates, classical stuff for those that are devoted to the beautiful study of harmonic analysis. So uh, let me finish my presentation here. So let's see, this doesn't jump. Okay, this doesn't jump. What if I do this? No, this doesn't jump. Here, maybe I'm alone here. All right, thank you very much. I'm not alone. Okay, oh, you're welcome. I was, I was afraid maybe everybody's sleeping after this. <laughs> Are there questions for Martin? I have a couple of my own, but so the first one, very, uh, I guess, very easy one. Uh, you only care about local behavior, right? So I, I know that defining VMO is complicated when you try to do it on spaces of infinite measure and all that, but you don't care about anything else. You only care about local behavior in the point, right? In all your computation. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the only thing that matters, right? Okay, and then, yes. Right, okay. And then, then the other question, which is maybe a bit more meaningful, um, you, your proof uses uh, that your measure is doubling and then you can use creased cubes and all these things. If the measure were not doubling, would you be able to reconstruct at least part of the argument using David Matila cubes? Mm -hmm. and... The question the question is very easy. The answer is very easy. I am not able. <laughs> Somebody else may be. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I don't know enough about doubling measures to 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 be able to answer you. So you may you may have more knowledge about this than me. <laughs> so no. so no, I am not. To answer the question precisely, I am not able to do it. Jose, Jose uh, yeah. you don't need to have doubling measures. Well, you need to have the geometric doubling for the space. So you can define the Chris cubes using, this is like the Hitonian. Yes, yes, yes. Dilemma but thing. but my, my question is, uh, they use Chris cubes, but one could use David Matila cubes, which are- They are the, they, they are the same. They, they are, are the same, same if the measure is doubling, but say- No, the no, they, they are, no. no. They are the same. They are you use the you use the construction. Actually, you can use any grid, and then because at the end of the day, the cubes are geometric objects that comes from balls that come from the geometric doubling property. They are the same. They have the same properties. Okay, I I, I know, but uh, so so the thing is, you are using this 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 splitting into low density cubes, and and then. In the cubes which are not low density, then the risk transform must not oscillate too much. Yes. If the measure is worse, I feel like the argument would change, and, and then maybe you need the structure. That we are using all we are using all the time that the measure is doubling constantly, almost at every step. So uh, you may be able to avoid this condition. I don't know, uh, but uh, okay, since we are working in NTA domains, we have already this condition. Yes, yes. I, I, I was thinking whether similar results would hold in more general domains. That's 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 that was okay. Yeah, kind of. Uh, I I don't even know how how should we write that in order to make some kind of sense because delta Reichenberg flat. If, if they are vanishing, they have small delta for some delta, <laughs> so you can find delta small enough. So in particular, you are NTA. So in particular, you are doubling. So uh, it's like. Um, Kind of, you need to make something that is uh, just different than what we have done. Uh, I don't know even what, how to write that kind of version of this. 
Okay. Thank you. Do we have other questions or comments? I have one. So why why your domain has to be bounded? Because you need bounded boundary, or can you do the same thing in in say in an unbounded domain with unbounded boundary? Okay, uh, this is a good point, and I am not sure. Uh, I, I think I think we use some technical steps. We use the boundedness of the domain. Okay, in particular, for for uh, this, there is a lemma that uh, uses uh, this fact, and I am not sure that we are able to replace it. Maybe yes. In fact, in the paper we are like very brave, and we say that probably you can do it for bounded domains for poles at infinity. Probably, Chavi is convinced that this is possible. Uh, okay. I am. I am just. Uh, have less knowledge about this, so I am. Uh, I, I don't dare to say that we are able to do it. It's hmm. uh, it, in, uh, my my pro my question here is it's probably doable, and I don't know if it's uh, if the effort is reasonable. <laughs> because uh, so you know in the, all these problems yeah, you always but, have to, but, to balance. But, uh, how much effort you have to put and what is the result? And just saying that this is valid for unbounded domains, maybe it's a huge effort. Uh, I don't know, maybe someday if I'm bored, I, will, I, I may try. But mm -hmm. uh, it, it should probably, you should probably find the ways to, to avoid the technical steps uh, mm -hmm. where you use it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We thank Marti again for the very nice talk. Thank you very much, Marti. Okay.